welcome back to another video here from the off kick garage in Australia. Last two weeks of winter time. I tell you, I know, right? It's been a while since the last video. Guys, I'm back. I had to reorganize the garage a little bit due to some repairs I had to do inside here. Some other projects going on. But now everything is back here in the off grid garage. And we will continue building the battery and doing more battery testing, putting more solar on the roof and doing more testing here on the workbench, of course. Well, in today's video, I want to show you something I have discovered recently. Maybe this is not very surprising for many of you, for some of you, I don't know, but I just want to show you, I want to actually visualize this to you. I've made a graph. I'm not very good with this Excel stuff, but I, I managed to make a graph which actually makes sense which shows you, let me start from the beginning. So in the last probably two or three weeks, I can see an increase in solar production here in the off-grid garage. And I can produce between four and six kilowatt hours per day now. Four weeks ago, it was only two, two and a half maybe. So really we are gaining momentum before we actually hit spring in two weeks time. And with this increased production, I could recharge the battery now a couple of times. I haven't fully charged the battery for months because I was always using energy here for the pumps and the lighting and charging the car and everything. I was never getting over 60, 70% or so. So I kept the battery between 30 and 60% most of the time during winter time and autumn. And as you know, I usually charge only to 3.4 volts which is a very low voltage. And then I let the battery absorb for an hour at least. This was my setting in the solar charge controllers with the battery here. And I could observe something which I didn't understand. Sometimes we hit the 3.4 volts and the time to absorb the battery, so until the current goes down to a couple of amps only, varied a lot. Sometimes it took only 15, 20 minutes and the current tapered off to almost zero. The next day fully charging, it took like two hours to absorb and the battery still wanted more energy. It still wasn't 100% absorbed. And I said, why is this happening? Why is the battery yesterday so quick in absorption and today it is so slow and it wants more energy than the actual absorption time can give it? I said, I haven't changed any parameters in between. Everything is the same as yesterday or the day before. Nothing has changed. And the only difference between charging from all these days was the current. The current is never the same as the day before. Sometimes there are sun. We're getting less energy here because of the shading. Sometimes there are clouds and we're getting heaps of amps. And then, I, and then I asked myself, what does it have to do with the amps? Because we are charging to the same voltage. We are charging to 3.4 volts. Why is it different? And then I remembered, well, we did this battery test just um, a few weeks ago when I um, did the um, efficiency test and I charged the 100 ampere hour lithium iron phosphate battery. And I looked at all these graphs and, and, and could find something very interesting. And I opened the EB tester software on the computer and had a look at this graph here, which is a 5 amp charge curve and a 20 amp discharge curve. The discharge curve is not of interest at all at the moment. Let's have a quick look at the charge curve here. If I hold the right mouse button down and follow the graph here up to 3.4 volts. Let me, let me zoom in here in this area. 3.4 volts. We can see 106 ampere hours charged into the battery. If we go to the maximum point here, this should be like 109 or something, 110. 110 ampere hours was the maximum we could get into this battery. So 106 out of 110. This is like, this is like, um, uh, this is like 96, 96.4% charged already. This is with 5 amps charging, so very slow charging. And this is what I have most of the time here in winter time when I have shading. I have a very slow charging during the day. How does this change if I charge with 10 amps? Okay, here, 10 amp curve. And presumably 3.4. 
Okay, if I would charge the battery with 10 amps, we are reaching 3.4 volt, but pushing only 97 ampere hours into it, not 106 anymore, 97. And I said, okay, it looks like there's a difference if I charge with 5 amps or double it to 10 amps. And here we have the 20 amp charge curve and discharge. Discharge is not of interest. So, charging with 20 amps, when do we hit 3.4 volts? There, 3.4. 95 ampere hours. One ampere hour less than charging with 10 amps. Okay, here is our 30 amp charge curve. That is 3.4 volts. 83 ampere hours only. 83, 95, 96, 106. So obviously we got a trend here. The faster I charge the battery, the less capacity it will have. So obviously the charging speed has something to do with the energy, with the capacity our cell has afterwards. All right, and this is our 40 amp charge curve. And again, we are looking for the 3.4 volt. That is 79 ampere hours. Charging with 40 amps. Then I said, okay, if this is happening at 3.4 volts, what is happening at 3.35 volts? What would happen if we charge the battery to a 3.35 volts with different currents? How much capacity would we actually reach at this point of time then? So I had to look across all these curves again and check the capacity at, at 3.35, 3.38, 3.4, 3.45 3 .4, 3 and 3.5. And I put all this information into a table. And here is what I found. So if you charge the battery to a 3.35 volt only with 5 amps, we would get 64 ampere hours in capacity. But just so you know, the maximum capacity we could charge into this battery was 110 ampere hours. And then I had a look what happened with the battery when I charged with 10 amps to 3.35 volts and I could get only 62 ampere hours into the battery. At 20 amps, only 60 ampere hours. At 30 amps, only 34. And at 40 amps, only 26 ampere hours. And then I went back into the curves and had a look at 3.8 volt. I said, what happens with these currents when I charge the battery to a 3.8 volt? Here's the result. 100 ampere hours if we charge with 5 amps, only 62 ampere hours if we charge with 40 amps, all the other currents somewhere in between. And then next voltage, 3.4. Charging with 5 amps, we're getting 106 ampere hours. This is just what I showed you in the graph. 110 was the maximum, 106 with 5 amps. Do I charge the battery with 40 amps instead? I'm getting only roughly 80 ampere hours out of 110. If we increase the charge voltage to a 3.45 and I charge with 5 amps, we are getting 99%, we are getting 109 ampere hours out of 110. And here at 3.45 volts, you can see it almost doesn't make a difference if we charge slow or fast. Yeah? Even at 40 amps, which is the maximum the Chinese cracker charger can charge, we're getting still 102 ampere hours out of 110. If you really want your battery charging to 100%, give it some absorption time then, and it will, will happily charge up to 100% then. And then I had another look at 3.5 volts, and we're getting full capacity with 5 amps, and almost full capacity with all the other charging currents. There's not much difference in capacity, charging slow, charging fast. And then I made this graph out of these data. So what we can see here at the bottom on the x-axis, uh, this is our charging destination. This is our charge target voltage, 3.35 to 3.5 volts. And on the left-hand side, on the y-axis, we have our capacity in ampere hours. And the different colors are our current, our charging speed we charge the battery with. And you can see here at 3.35 volts what the difference is between blue, slow charging, 
and orange fast charging. See the inconsistency you have depending on how fast you charge your battery and the same still at 3.8 volts and even at 3.4 volts. Look at this. And only at 3.45 volts or higher you will get a fairly consistent charging capacity with your battery. It doesn't really matter then if you charge slower or faster. And charging to 3.5 volts, the capacity at any charging speed is very close together. And also, uh, because I'm an Excel Google spreadsheet expert now, I made this graph here as well, which shows you the spread if you compare different charging speeds two different charging targets. So again, 3.35 volts to 3.5. And you can see if you charge too low, you're getting an inconsistent charging result. Because people are always asking under my videos, what settings are the best to charge to 80%? What settings are the best to charge to 20%? Well, if, you, if we go back to this table here for a moment and saying, okay, like, so 85 ampere hours here would be roughly 80% state of charge for this battery. We achieve this charging to 3.4 volts at 30 amps. But you will never get 30 amps a constant current out of your solar, right? It is all dependent on the weather and on the what time of the day it is on the season and how full your battery already is. This is just under test conditions here. I had fixed test conditions and I had a constant charging current. But here we can say charging to 3.45 volts will give you like so between 93% and almost 100%. But then again, we cannot really say we need to charge to 3.45 volts because it again depends on how fast you charge your battery. Yeah, guys, and here is exactly the answer I have found for my problem here. For my initial question, why do I see an inconsistent charging and absorption time when I charge to 3.4 volts? Well, it is totally depending how fast or how slow I charge my battery. So I have now changed my charging settings in the solar charge controllers to 3.45 and I can already see a far more constant and consistent charging result. You will find all this information on my website here. I'll put the um, link to this spreadsheet here under the video here in the description as well as on my website. I have all the graphs there on my website to download for you if you want to have a look at these and make up your own mind. Well, this was another milestone for me and I learned a lot from this experiment now, getting all this information out of these graphs from our previous tests now. So I've got a far better understanding now what these different target voltages actually mean in terms of state of charge and how can I achieve a more consistent charging now with my battery and a certain uh, target voltage. Okay, guys, as always, thank you so much for watching. Thanks for all your support here on the channel, all your beer donations, all your thanks donations, all everyone who has used my uh, Tesla referral code. Uh, thank you, Grant, who recently used it. And I shall catch you again in one of the next videos here on the channel. And until then, stay charged and safe. And well, thanks for watching again. See you then. Bye bye.